Whatever. All right, I'm going to crush through some of these here. Yes, Actual saying. Justice Warriors back in the chat saying two things. One, pay your car early, use cash. Two, if you're against genetic passports, how come I had to bring a jar of my stuff to get into Blaze Studios? Well, I don't know. It's, I, stop it, Sean. <laughs> Sean, stop. Just stop. <laughs> Anthony says... <laughs> you're not funny. <laughs> Anthony says... So I don't know if you guys are aware, but I'm actually really interested in personal finance and how to do better with the money that I have. I found throughout my life that not learning this stuff in school was a giant struggle for me. And I hate to sound like one of those sales pitch guys. I hate to sound like one of those culty finance guys because I'm not. I'm just a person that went through this myself, got myself into debt, got myself out of debt, and then proceeded to help family and friends do the same. So one of the things I'm absolutely fascinated with is car buying and what is going on in the used car market right now. Now, the headlines are crazy. They say used cars are up 35%. Used cars are up 55%. Used car rates are going to continue to go up for the next 20 years or whatever. All that is a little bit overplayed, and I don't want you guys to panic too much if you were looking to get into a new car or a new used car, new to you but used to somebody else at some point in the future. However, if you are in a certain set of circumstances, now is actually a wonderful time to consider your options. Typically, leasing a car is an absolutely devastating financial decision for somebody. You should not do it. The math does not make sense. You can rationalize it any way you want, but I'm just going to call Papa Dave Ramsey to come and lecture you about how you should not lease a car. It's just not a good deal. However, a lot of financial advice, a lot of advice in general, kind of isn't applicable after you're already in that situation. It's like telling somebody to use a protection when you find out that they're six months pregnant. We kind of got past that phase, so the question is, what do you do now? And fortunately for people who made the error of leasing a car within the last couple of years, there's something insane going on with the market and you need to consider your options because you could actually come out significantly ahead. But really quickly, before I get into the video, I do have a sponsor for the video. It's Keto with Justice. We're gonna roll into the ad, chill out. We'll get right back to it. A new study just revealed some shocking statistics. According to the CDC, 49% of the American population is medically obese, not overweight, not slightly too big for those pants, obese and about 54 percent of women and 41 percent of men have reported struggling with weight loss that's half the nation that me and possibly most likely according to my demographics you are living in and we're all struggling with weight and it's because people are just kind of being a little bit more active and kind of watching their diet but what they really need is a secret weapon and the secret weapon that i recommend is keto with justice go to my custom url ketowithjustice.com order yourself a product at a 51% discount just for people in my audience that is proven to assist people in losing weight. It follows the basic principles of the keto diet. It's got great reviews. If you don't love it, you can return it within 60 days and get a money back guarantee. No risk, high rewards. Go to ketowithjustice.com to get that. So like I said, we're going to set aside the ghost of Dave Ramsey for a little bit, but you could come back later and lecture all these people when they make mistakes in the future. And we're going to talk about the current situation when it comes to the used car market, because typically we talk about this in terms of people who want to get into a car and the struggles that they have to go through. And by the way, I was super fortunate that I pulled the trigger on the first car I've ever owned in my entire life outright in the month of January. Where was I January 6th? I was buying a car. That's my alibi. Please, the FBI, don't arrest me. That's where I was January 6th. I was buying a car. But the thing is, is that buying that car was incredibly intelligent. And of course, I did it in all the terrible ways where I went to a bunch of dealerships. I argued with people. I haggled for the price. And I ended up getting something in another state at about $3,000 under the price I would have paid for anything in this state. And the crazy thing that happened after that was that the vehicle that I bought went up in value by eight or $9,000. And that's what's happening for a lot of people out there that are in possession of used cars. However, what I want to talk about specifically is leasing. And the reason I want to talk about leasing is because normally, as I said in the beginning of the video, and as the ghost of Dave Ramsey will come out and tell you, is a terrible option. And it's because it is. It's always bad financially. It doesn't make sense. Stop trying to rationalize it. 
it's not a good idea. It's the most expensive way to own a car. It's the most expensive way to operate a vehicle. I mean, just think about this. If you're leasing a car, you always perpetually, if you're a perpetual leaser, must have full auto insurance coverage for that vehicle. This is not the case if you own the car. If you own the car, then you have to have liability, but you don't necessarily need to have collision. That can save you money. Also, you're constantly making payments, so you don't have your income working for you. You have your income working against you. I recently paid off the car that I bought in January at the beginning of October because I was obsessed with getting control over my income and not having to deal with payments. Payments are going to be the death of you. You want to have free range. Just imagine what you could do if you didn't have to worry about all of these constant payments. Yes, everybody has bills, electricity, water, etc. Unless you live in a building that covers electricity and water, but you get the point. So leasing is not a good idea. But again, this is if you're in a lease. And what I need you to do if you're in an auto lease is look at what is called the payoff amount for that auto lease. You see, at the end of every lease's terms, the dealership puts up a price. And this price is usually way too high for you to buy the car in any sensible way at the end of your lease term. For instance, I have a relative that is in a vehicle that has a lease that is expiring, and the car buyout amount is about $18,000. Now, normally, what you can get for a car that is priced from the dealership to you at around $18,000 is something like $15,000 on the open market. So if you were to buy it, you were taking a loss of $3,000. This is why, again, leasing a car, one of the most expensive things to do because it's years old, etc. However, and I do mean however, Due to the fact that there is a used car shortage in the country, and this is due to circumstances related to the pandemic, the price of this car on Kelly Blue Book right now is $28,000, meaning not buying out this car and selling it yourself is going to cost my family member $10,000 if they don't do it, which means we're in the one circumstance in life at all where leasing a car with that ridiculous number that they gave you way back when is something that you need to examine. Now, what you need to understand is that the number that I'm talking about, the payoff quote at the end of your lease, is the number that the dealership is legally obligated to sell you the car for if you are willing to pay it. You've already had the agreement in writing. So even though they want this car and they want to sell it for $10,000 more or whatever amount more than is listed, you and you alone can buy this car at this price. This is your great opportunity to get a used car at significantly cheaper than market prices. Also, you can flip the car after you pay for it, or you can flip the car before you pay for it. Because contrary to popular belief, you can, in fact, sell a car that you leased. All you have to do is get the dealership that you're selling it to to pay off the lease amount and you can keep the differential. So if you just want to get out of this car, start calling dealerships, tell them about your situation, get an offer, and they'll take it because they're desperate. The car that I'm referring to is leased to a specific dealership. I'm calling all the other dealerships from that brand that are owned by different people because, again, they're just franchise owners and pitching them this car that they can outbid the other dealership from the same brand of car. So basically, if you own a Ford, call the other Ford dealerships and you'll have Ford outbidding Ford. They can buy it out before. It is a common myth that they cannot do so and you should really consider your options. You could also sell it to a private party, a non-typical dealership, a non-same brand dealership, as long as they agree to pay the buyout amount to them. So gather your paperwork and start shopping around. This is your golden opportunity to profit off of a lease car, which you've already lost money on. Don't lose any more money on. And by the way, the dealerships know this. Chances are, if you're in a lease that is expiring soon, you are getting letter after letter from the dealership asking you to churn in your lease early and offering you some kind of a deal on a new lease for a new car because they need to get a hold of that used car. Because like never before in the history of this country, something with a motor and an engine is going up in value without something unique connected to it. You know, like an old school car that rises in value due to the fact that it's rare or a car where an ex-football player murders two people and drives away. And yes, the Ford Bronco from that year is still incredibly valuable in this country for that reason. 
So they're sending you letters. They're trying to get you to come in. They're offering all these deals. So you need to think to yourself, why are they doing that? And the reason why is because your car actually has positive equity in it and nobody was expecting this to happen. So what I want you to do, if you're the owner of a recently used car or any used car at all, is go to kellybluebook.com. Punch in your exact information for the vehicle that you own. You could put in the VIN number. You could put in your license plate and see what you can get. And you can get two offers from Kelly Blue Book immediately. The first one is an instant cash offer. That price that I quoted you, the $28,000, that's the instant cash offer. That's not even the let's shop around and argue about it kind of price, like what you could ultimately get. Like I have people calling me constantly because I use my own personal phone number telling me that they want the car in immediately. And the next thing you want to get is the trade-in value. And the reason it's really important that you get the trade-in value, even if it's a little bit less than the value that you could get as a cash offer from a dealership, is because although you get more value in the cash, if you intend to trade it in to get credit for a new vehicle, or you intend to use that cash to buy yourself a new vehicle, if you ultimately do that, you'll actually pay taxes on the full amount that you pay that you would not pay if you did a trade-in. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, in the state that you live in, likely, I think it's about 47 out of the 50 states, there's a sales tax that you have to pay, and you have to pay that when you're buying any kind of car, new or used. It's for big-ticket items. Typically, it's items over $100 or over $1,000. Again, depending on your municipality, look it up for yourself. And in my city and in my state, New York City of New York State, you have to pay four and four, four for city, four for state. And it's a little bit more than that. It works out to about eight, seven, five percent on the cars that you buy. But if you don't want to pay for that, one of the things that you can do is trade in. You're going to have to pay the tax no matter what, because you always have to pay taxes. But if you trade in, the value that they give you on your trade in is not taxable as if you were to pay them in cash or in any other method. So what does that mean in practice? Well, because there's a shortage and the prices of used cars are going up, selling in this market just to ultimately buy in this market doesn't make that much sense. It's actually one of the very few times that I'm not going to say it's a good purchase because every finance person in the history of the world will tell you it's not a good purchase where buying a new car makes a little bit more sense because the new cars seem to have around the same MSRP. So if you were to try to upgrade your vehicle on, let's say, the 28000 27000 trade-in that we're talking about for the vehicle of the relative that I have to something like a $50,000 car, and you were to sell that for the $27,000, you are like, cool, I got 10,000 net profit on that. That's awesome. And then you were to roll that into your purchase for a $50,000 vehicle, you would end up paying in my city 4375 in taxes. $4,375. That's a lot of money to pay in taxes just to upgrade yourself to a car that again, new cars are very questionable, but I understand why in this market people might be considering them. However, if you were to trade in for that vehicle and you got $27,000 credit. And by the way, go to the dealership and make sure you can get the credit before you try to pull this maneuver so you know it's the right price and you know buying out your lease makes sense with the credit that you're actually promised. The taxes that you would ultimately end up paying would be on the $23,000 because you're trading an asset that in my city and in most places is not taxed in the same way as if you were to use cash or finance or any other payment method. Again, typically trade-in values are not great, and I wouldn't recommend a trade-in except under extreme circumstances. But under these circumstances, crazy coronavirus, $10,000 plus in equity on the vehicle, it actually makes financial sense or more financial sense to purchase a car in this manner. Now, obviously, if your tax rate doesn't go as high as mine or it doesn't make the numbers work as much as mine, then that's something that you need to consider and factor in for yourself. But for a lot of people, that little bit more money that you might get from selling the vehicle versus a trade-in, trade-ins are typically quicker, might just be the thing that you need, plus it's less hassle. Look, the purpose of this video isn't to sell you the secret wisdom of how you can make an exorbitant profit in the used car market or anything like that. 
Most of this video is to inform you on what you likely don't already know because the level of knowledge about finance in this country is minuscule. It's pathetic. I see people making errors with money because they don't understand these things that have college degrees that are supposed to be the smartest of the smart. I know business people who crunch numbers all day, give out loans that lease cars at horrible rates because they weren't paying attention. I know people who don't go to a credit union to finance their cars. All of these mistakes are super common and there's nothing to be ashamed of. But the thing is, is that you need to make yourself your best advocate. You need to go out there and argue for yourself. You need to be aware of what you're actually talking about. Most people don't know what the lease and payoff amount is of their vehicle. They didn't bother to look because that wasn't relevant to them. Knowing this information is incredibly crucial to what we're talking about right now, and it's also always incredibly crucial because you should know what you're pledging or potentially what you could be pledging in the future on the things that you're purchasing. People need to really stop thinking about about the payments, how much the payment they can make every single month, and start thinking about the price of goods. When I went to buy my car, I did not think about what the monthly payment was going to be because I knew I was going to power down the loan I had to finance because I didn't have time to save up. There was a situation. Explain it another time. But the point is, I was considering the price of the car, my expenses, and how fast I could pay down this loan. And now I have a car that has gone up in value by $10,000 in my personal possession. I see a relative that has a vehicle that has gone up in value $10,000 in their lease situation that they could buy out at the end of the year or the beginning of next year. Not, not, not trying to get bogged down in that. And I want other people out there to understand that you might not even be aware that you're in a situation where you've had a giant windfall and you should act on this information. You cannot fix your life, be personally responsible unless you fix your personal finances, unless you become personally responsible for your finances. And you can't do any of that if you're willfully ignorant, if you're afraid. Don't give in to that. You need to confront the realities of your financial situation. Go watch my other video on how to build up your credit score. And maybe if you guys are interested in this, which by the way, the algorithm will suppress the hell out of this video because it's totally off brand for my content. We can cover this in the future, but it's incredibly important that you guys understand your own financial situation. And if you're in this situation where you could make money off a lease car that you made a mistake in the past, then you should definitely do that. If you have a used car that you don't even drive that much and you're looking to upgrade maybe you should be aware of the fact that used car prices are going up through the freaking roof but hey those are just my thoughts and let me just tell you if you want the super secrets to making money in finance then what you need to do is go to my website and pay $79.99 a day for my course where I tell you the three magic words that will make you a millionaire in four days and just because I'm not a millionaire doesn't mean that I can't be without selling you secrets of my Cody weird cult like finance thing. No, I'm just kidding about that. But seriously, like, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let me know if you got your stuff together or if this helped a little bit or if you're interested. I'm actually interested in what you guys have to say. And I mean that without a hint of sarcasm as more sarcasm is coming out of my voice as I'm starting to say it. But seriously, I am interested. Comment, like, share. You guys know the drill. I have a new Instagram. Follow me on the Instagram. Till next time.